Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tricia Jones Park and I am not on the screen. That is our distinguished presenter, Abby, one of the two presenters we have today. Um, but I am the School to Work Project Director um, and we're um, a project that is funded through the Partnership and Employment Systems Change Grant through the Administration for Community Living and we're housed at the Center for Employment and Inclusion which is a project within the Center for Persons with Disabilities at Utah State. Um, so today we're really pleased to partner with subject matter experts from SEEK. SEEK is a progressive nonprofit agency providing a wide range of community supports to help people with intellectual and developmental disabilities live lives of their choosing. SEEK's goal is to become a community of excellence that honors, respects, and assists people with developmental disabilities as they direct their lives towards work relationships recreation and personal development. SEEK really sees their role is, is to help create supports for people to identify their hopes and dreams and access um, the resources needed to achieve them. So today, um, Abby Taylor and Kyra Harvey, um, who are just dynamic leaders at SEEK, are gonna be presenting um, the how and the why um, in terms of developing this online curriculum for staff and people they support. Abby has been with SEEK for six years she began her career as a high school special education teacher, and then she started at SEEK as an employment consultant. She got the opportunity to combine her love of teaching and passion for customized employment into her current role as the customized employment and training mentor at SEEK. Thank you so much, Abby. Kyra is the instructional resource consultant for SEEK. She started her journey with SEEK in September of 2019. She completed her master's in social work at Morgan State University and has a background in case management teaching and facilitating workshops centered around behavior and character development. Before joining SEEK, Kyra spent her time in Baltimore, Maryland, helping city youth with improving literacy, team building, and community outreach. She is so happy to um, finally land and make her mark with a um, new population stepping into the role of instructional resource consultant and gives her a chance to engage and learn more with um, people with disabilities. We're really excited to learn from you both today. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say, um, we have participants representing um, parents, self-advocates, educators, service providers, including residential settings, day services, employment, voc rehab counselors, support coordinators, state agency representatives from several different states. So we're just so excited that people are um, excited about, uh, interested in this content. And um, I just want to point out that whatever perspective or role you're coming from, I think you can really benefit from the strategies that um, Abby and Kyra are going to share today. So use the chat box for questions. Um, we'll be monitoring those and then we will leave time at the end for questions. Um, and I'm just excited to learn together. So um, thank you so much. I'll turn the time over to you, Abby. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Trisha, um, for inviting Kyra and myself to present. Um, yeah, I mean, Trisha, like you said, you know, we have people from all backgrounds who are joining this webinar. So Kyra and I truly hope that, um, you know, this will be meaningful and, and you guys can have some good takeaways from this. So, um, yeah, we can go ahead and get started. So um, today we're going to be discussing uh, the curriculum that Kyra and I um, have implemented at SEEK um, for the people we support, you know, while we're doing these virtual supports. Um, we're all learning, so <laughs> there's been a lot of learning on our parts. So, um, so we'll talk a little bit about um, technology, which was kind of our biggest hurdle. Uh, we'll talk about staff engagement and how we trained. Um, Kyra will discuss um, the lessons that we've come up with and kind of how we structure our lessons. We'll talk about some challenges and solutions, um, data so far that we have, and then kind of our reflection and how we hope to move forward. So, of course, you know, the, the biggest hurdle, of course, going from a community-based approach to we're all at home, we're trying to support people virtually, obviously we're gonna need some technological knowledge. And so we really wanted to gauge people's knowledge with um, the whole Microsoft system, so that's, we operate within um, Office 365, which has all these, uh, which is through Microsoft. And so there's all these like programs and stuff that people need to know as part of that. So we had to gauge where people were with um, Teams, uh, Zoom, FaceTime, 
the email itself and then all those programs that go along with it. If you're familiar with um, Office 365, you know, there's SharePoint, there's OneDrive, there's all these programs, right? So we really had to see um, what people knew. And then on the other hand, we also had to assess what technology the people we support have access to. So this is just like a little screen grab of uh, a very, um, I don't want to say, a very rudimentary um, assessment that we did, an inventory that we did. And so this was for staff and we just asked the basic questions. Is your phone working properly? Do you have a charger? Um, do you have a laptop or a tablet? You know, just kind of these general questions to get the ball rolling. Um, and so then once we figured out, okay, people do have technology, now let's do some training. Um, so we, Kyra and I literally had like a day and a half to pull together um, mm -hmm. the start of the curriculum. Um, and so then like the day before we all started working from home, we brought all the departments into our headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and we just department by department and did a presentation on the lessons that we had. We only had about two at that time. Um, but yeah, we went in, we showed them how to access the lessons. We went through the, the how to's, which you guys will find out about later um, and, and really did some hands-on training with them. And then since then, of course, we've had to do some trainings one-to-one um, -one with staff. So, you know, we did the face-to-face -face training before we all started working from home. We've done over the phone, we've done written instructions, we've gotten on FaceTime and uh, Zoom and Teams with people and done some video tutorials. So we've really kind of run the gamut of, of training our staff. Um, and they've responded really well to it. Um, I will say that, you know, because we're completely community-based, our services are, are usually face-to-face. -face. And so this moving to a solely online learning support style was um, a big obstacle for us and for our staff to overcome. And so there, there was a lot of teaching about even um, it, signing into their email from their phone. Um, some of them didn't remember Apple passwords and stuff like that. So, you know, there was a lot of troubleshooting that went into it. Um, this is just an example of um, some of the directions that we shared. Um, so we have our curriculum available on our SEEK website, which you are all welcome to, to go check it out after this. Um, but we have it available on our SEEK website. And so this is just step-by-step -step directions on how to access it you know, from the website. And so this is the phase that we're kind of moving into now. Um, now that we have kind of our baseline information, now we want to get people up to expert level using their technology for everything, um, because this, of course, is our new normal now. Um, and so we're really working towards people having knowledge, not only of like how their phone or tablet or computer operates, but also do they know how to use all these programs within their hardware? Um, do they know how to connect to Wi-Fi? Something as basic as that all the way up to um, being an expert user on Zoom or Teams. So um, I'll walk you through a little bit more of this. So these are the checklists that we're about to start implementing with people. In fact, I think our, our first kind of training competency um, session is tomorrow. So maybe we'll have a follow-up next time we all meet. Um, <laughs> But um, so yeah, they're level one. Can you connect to Wi-Fi? Can you connect to your hotspot? Can you compose an email? Can you set up an event in your calendar? And then they'd be ranked, you know, yeah, I've got this, totally good, independent, sufficient, like you may need to show me once or twice, but then I'm good and then insufficient, like I'm gonna need a lot more training for this. And this is so we can build up our staff's um, competencies and, and confidence as well, um, you know, cause I, um, I know a lot of people have some fear when it comes to technology. And so we don't, we want to embrace that, right? We want to make people competent and, and make people not afraid of their technology. So that's level one. Level two is of course, kind of building on those skills. Can you update, um, 
your malware prevention on your uh, laptop instead of having our IT department doing it? Can you do it? Um, just, you know, kind of the basics of maintaining your, your technology. And then, of course, it builds up to those programs that I was talking about, the virtual learning platforms. Um, what do you know about Teams? What do you know about Zoom? What do you know about Skype, et cetera? So technology aside, here's this, you know, the kind of meat and potatoes of me and Kyra's jobs over the last two and a half months. Um, so we've had to build a curriculum for the ground, from the ground up. Um, let's see, I think we were notified on like a Thursday that we mm -hmm. was now going to virtual supports and we had until I think Monday to get some lessons together. Right, Kyra? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You're yeah, it on. was, um, yeah, it was definitely a short turnaround. And so we, Kyra and I put our heads together and, um, you know, we came up with these daily lessons. And so the curriculum was meant to be, of course, a tool for engagement because um, we weren't sure yet, like, what virtual supports were going to look like, but we knew we needed to, to provide something for our staff to, um, to do with the people we support during the day. And so it's, it's mainly used as a tool for engagement um, and learning. Um, we started out with daily lessons. So every day we, we put together a lesson or an activity um, that was meant to engage that person for at least an hour. Um, of course, we have people of all different complexities and all different learning styles, and so may take shorter, maybe longer, but we were aiming for about an hour a day. Um, the, we have topics that range um, from independence, daily living skills, clear ac career exploration and readiness, technology, social skills. We kind of run the gamut of life, right? We, we want to teach people all sorts of different things. Um, and so this next slide is just kind of a snippet of these are actual lessons that we have in our curriculum and um, just under the topic um, in which they you know, kind of represent. So for independence, we've done a travel training, pedestrian safety, um, personal finance, self-advocacy lessons, daily living skills, grocery items, what to wear when the seasons change, how to be healthy and safe especially during COVID-19. Um, that was actually our very first lesson. Um, emergency prep, you know, what to do in, in the event of an emergency. Career skills, how to interview virtually. A lot of places are, are moving to that now, whether we're in COVID times or not. Um, right. so, you know, we really wanted to bring people along on that. Career exploration, how to network, how to accept feedback and praise and criticism. Um, technology etiquette, we've organized some web quests, so teach people just how to use the internet, um, and then being safe on the internet. Social skills, we've taught the different styles of communication, conflict resolution, different relationships. So as you can see, we kind of try and touch on every aspect of life. So um, in this, we, we wanted to make sure that staff knew what they were getting themselves into. <laughs> um, we, we really wanted to, because staff are the ones who are delivering this, these lessons, this educational material. And so we really wanted to make sure that they felt confident, you know, kind of running the show. Um, and so we, we really made it a point to empower them. Um, you know, Kyra and myself both have talked to I would say 75% of the staff at one point or another um, throughout the last two and a half months. And we always tell people, you know, we, we provide the resources, but you deliver it. And so you can make the lesson your own. You can make changes. If, if this worksheet or this activity isn't appropriate for the person you support, go out and find something else or modify it to fit their needs. Um, get creative. You know, if you think another video would help out, go search it on YouTube. Share that with us. Um, and the exit cards, which Kyra will talk about, have provided a lot of feedback for us on how effective these lessons are. And then, of course, we're always willing. We, I think, Kyra, at the end of every 
phone call that we're on with a team or a meeting or a, just one person, we say, if you need anything, please let us know, right? Please call us. We are mm -hmm. to help. I mean, I'm not a tech guru by any means, but you know, I'm happy to figure it out together. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we really want to encourage staff to, to make these lessons their own and, um, you know, cause they know the person that they support best. So we leave it really up to them. All right. And so now Kyra is up. I will stop sharing my camera, Kyra, and then you can share yours and I'll just click through awesome. the point for you. Okay, great. Now on my end, I can see myself. So I just want to make sure that I am being seen. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I think I think I can be seen. <laughs> um, perfect. So after finding our baseline and really uh, building that foundation for our staff and the people we support, the next step is creating a lesson. And this is kind of like the fun part of, of our job and the fun part because we really start to cater to the people we support, really meeting them where they are. And that's the important part in this piece. Um, we understand that our staff, they didn't sign on to be teachers. And at this point now, we want to make sure that the instruction guide that we set up is clear, it's concise, and it brings clarity. So um, anatomy of a lesson, the first thing that we create is a how-to that tells you step-by-step step everything that you will need to do for that lesson. If it's watch the video and stop at 30 seconds, then we'll make sure that we say that in the lesson, or it'll say watch the video in, in its entirety. Um, sometimes we also have scavenger hunts included in our instruction guides. So I heavily encourage to read the how-to guides before performing them for the people you support so that you're a little prepared. Um, this guide, it should be thorough. You want to give a step-by-step -step process and uh, you want, it's like a train the trainer model. We have definitely created this in a form so that once you learn how to maneuver the lesson, you can teach someone else. Um, the pro tip staff should review the lesson ahead of time. I mean, Abby, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. <laughs> and you can see here, we wanted to provide an example of uh, anatomy of a lesson, the how-to guide. I'm sure some of you probably can see that this is our health and safety, the first lesson that we did. And we were really, really trying to make sure we focused on the people we support, understanding what we're in right now, because all they know is that they cannot do what they're used to doing every day. And we're, we're shifting, it's a change. So that was the first lesson that we felt was necessary, bringing attention to what we're doing right now in this pandemic and understanding what COVID-19 is. So you can see on the guide, we have a variety of watch videos, um, discussion questions. Discussion questions are imperative. They're very important. Discussion questions is how you can build feedback and that feedback you can use on your exit card. And we'll get to that um, later in the slides. But providing discussion questions gives that opportunity for the support staff and the person they support really to create dialogue. And that information you can take back and give back to the people that are creating your lessons. That determines how the rest of your lessons go. We have videos in our lessons that are animated. We have some that are have real live action included in them. And while you're doing this lesson, that's something that you can take away from this. You know, this animation video didn't go so well, or the person I support really likes live action, or I discovered during this lesson that the person I support does take their medication or they don't take it on a timely manner. So there's great things that you can discover from dialogue. Uh, next slide, thank you. <laughs> um, this is another example of an, a how-to guide, a little different, a little bit more extensive. Um, while we were developing our lessons, we realized that we can include different models. We're very multi-model with our lessons. So sometimes we'll have, again, a scavenger hunt, or we'll have a digital interactive worksheet that can be used. So sometimes that's required to be downloaded. And because we started using our 
lessons on a sharing site on SharePoint, sometimes that can be a little confusing when you're opening up a document and then you realize everyone within your agency has access to that. So it's imperative sometimes to highlight and make sure key things are made note on the how-to guide. You can see that I've highlighted a particular section that says right click on the transitioning text worksheets and click download. That is imperative because that's also something that you can save later and it's another resource that you have for you and the person you support. Again, going back to multimodal learning approach, that's really where we wanted to start off with our lessons. We wanted to make sure that we were meeting the people that we support where they are. And that's first understanding that everyone learns differently. Everyone learns visually, auditory, reading, writing, or kinesthetic. So we, we work very hard trying to implement those different forms of learning into our lessons. Sometimes it's watching a video, performing a scavenger hunt in your own home. Or it could also be using money, money skills, practicing those money skills in a kinesthetic way, role playing is another way. Journaling is a form that form of uh, lessons that we used also. Having a recap, requiring that the people we support either type, they can write out their responses. These are just some great examples that I was able to provide with videos. We include lessons, um, YouTube videos. And that was an amazing discovery. You know, YouTube, you can just take the link, pop it right in, and it could be a direct click for the people you support or the, or the staff that will be conducting the lesson. Um, there also was a resource we discovered on Sprout Film Festival. They have a wide range of videos for you to watch and there are no more, maybe as long as 20 minutes, as short as I wanna say three, but there are a wide variety of subjects that you can cover and I was very excited to discover this. I created a Film Friday Festival and what that conducted of was maybe three or four videos and they had discussion questions after them. Again, creating that dialogue with the support staff and the person they support is important auditory, using music as a component in your lessons, and um, we haven't started yet, but podcasts is something that we're looking into, trying to open up uh, the people we support to different platforms. Reading and writing, digital worksheets are my new favorite thing. I love those, and I meant to put this on here, but Teachers Pay Teachers is a great site also to look at for digital worksheets to follow along. They have some great topics discovered from a wide variety of grocery stores, um, identifying grocery items, also learning how to count money, knowing how much change you get back. Journal reflection, that part was something I really thought was really important for the people we support during this time. There's a shift change in the culture of what they're used to doing every day. So this captured that moment where they're able to really reflect on them themselves and how the pandemic is affecting them, especially within their home. Kinesthetic, again, with the scavenger hunts, that's a fun idea. Um, we really wanted to make sure the people we support were aware of the difference between cleaning and grooming. And I thought it was a great idea to create a scavenger hunt where you're looking for different items within your home that relate to that. You know, do you have a mop in your house? That's two points. Do you have a hairbrush? That's one point. But also distincting the difference between grooming and cleaning. Demonstrating money skills. Again, we do that in our money management class. Um, and I actually found that to be very helpful with the people we support if we use money kits that are a little bit more reflective and look like the money that we use today. Our exit cards, this is our recap. After each lesson, we ask that the staff um, perform an exit card. And this was a tricky process for us at first, really trying to capture every single thing that each person was doing with our agency. At first, it felt overwhelming, to be honest. But we knew that the information that we were receiving was going to be important to continue on, and we gather a lot of information from them, finding out that a lot of people are learning new character development, 
They're learning new daily living skills and understanding different relationships within their lives from these lessons. It's great. Used at the end of a lesson and for feedback from both persons supported and the staff. So there's an opportunity for staff to speak about what they were able to dis discover and then the person we support, did they learn anything new? You can see in this slide right here, the first exit card format we followed when COVID began. And we first started off giving hard copies of these and then asking staff to either take a picture or scan it on their phone and email it to us. Um, we collected this doc document by having them send a picture and um, we collect that in a, in a file. But unfortunately, um, we only were able to pass out 10 in the beginning. And uh, we, I guess we didn't expect for COVID to go this long. <laughs> but gladly, we were able to kick in an online exit card. So this made it a relief. It was a direct link to our online exit card. Creating a, and using Google Forms was a great feature for that too. And now what we have is we have a link for the staff to click on and they'll fill that out and it will be submitted to us and sent directly to us. So we're still capturing that information, finding out great things. Okay. That's my part. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, so, okay, can everyone see me now? <laughs> So um, I will um, talk a little bit about the challenges that we faced. Um, of course, this was not a seamless <laughs> transition, um, as I don't think it was for anyone. Um, right. But, you know, it was important to us that we kind of accepted the challenges and took them on head on, and then we kind of troubleshooted along the way. Um, and so, of course, technology was probably our biggest barrier. Um, not only for staff, but for people we support, um, you know, since we couldn't come face to face anymore, it was difficult to show people how to log on to Zoom or how to find a link um, embedded within an invitation, right? Because before we could just sit next to someone with their computer and say, okay, do this, 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 and this. And now, you know, we're in completely different places trying to teach people how to do that. So definitely a learning curve for both us as staff and the people we support. Um, but we're getting better and better each day. Um, and of course, for the technology part, you know, we do, we have implemented the training sessions and the kind of assessments, um, at least for staff. And then we're also piloting a project where we're um, loaning technology, um, either tablets or laptops to people we support as well, because um, we really want 100% engagement. Um, and so um, a lot of the feedback from the lessons has been about reaching people with more complex learning needs. Um, so of course, as with you know many agencies, we provide supports to people of all ranges um, and of all learning styles and all complexities and, and um, you know, to severe disabilities as well. And so while it's like I said earlier, you know, we, Kyra and I provide the general lessons, but we really leave it in the staff's hands to kind of cater it to the person that they're supporting because they know them best. Um, so we actually have kind of made some strides. Um, we've started working with a young woman who is going to help us kind of find resources to help um, reach people with more complex learning needs and kind of tailor our curriculum so that it's it, it's got more of an umbrella effect and that it's reaching everyone. Um, family buy-in. So um, I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> it was kind of weird for us, you know, initially when families were like, we're okay, like don't need you to, to do any virtual supports, like we're all good. Um, and of course that's, you know, we want 100% engagement. And so the family buy-in part of it was um, a little difficult. And so we had to kind of navigate these difficult discussions about, you know, it's it's our job to provide supports. Um, and you know, by law, we have to provide supports. So um, those conversations are still ongoing in some respects. Um, but I, I don't have an exact figure. I wish I did. But um, I would say we've probably got close to 80 85% engagement from all the people that we support in their families. So I think that's a pretty good number. 
um, of course, lack of planning time. Um, we had about two days um, to throw together this whole, like the structure of the curriculum, what we were planning it to look like, um, and then develop a couple of lessons. And so that's just kind of been trial and error throughout, um, you know, but we've, we've really got gotten into a groove um, of doing the lessons and helping out staff and, you know, what the lesson should look like. Um, lack of usage and misunderstanding of purpose. So originally, um, I would say the first probably three to four weeks that we were out, um, staff wasn't really understanding that, like, the curriculum was meant to be a tool that's used daily daily engagement of people. Um, it was more like, oh, they I think what they thought it, it was more like a resource that they could use if needed. Um, but our executive director, Karen, you know, made it clear that like these, we, we need to engage people in a meaningful way. And the curriculum is the way to do that. And so I'll talk a little bit more about data um, later on and I can tell you exactly how many people are using it and what kind of feedback we've gotten. Um, and then there was a, a very interesting quote from a staff member um, in our supported living, um, so our residential program. And it's kind of this shift from taking care of people to teaching people and to helping them be the best versions of themselves and to um, guide them towards independence. And I don't have his direct quote, but I'll sum it up um, in that, you know, he he said to our executive director one day, he said, um, you know, I really this shows me that I really didn't understand my role before. Um, I, I used to think that it was just I was taking care of people I was making sure that they were safe in their homes. Um, but now I realize that it's my role to help them be more independent. And so I think that was really a, a turning point for us as an agency even, um, that our direct support professionals are the best and we rely on them for so much. And now we're, we're giving them the tools and the training to actually take them to the next level of, you're more than just a caretaker, right? You're a teacher, you're a support, you are an advocate. Um, and so that was really meaningful for us. So, so far, um, we have only implemented the online exit card form for probably three weeks now, um, but we've received about 43 exit cards total. And then um, out of our probably 75, 80 staff, we have um, 10 people in employment services. So that's everyone in the employment services department using it. We have about 15 staff in community engagement using the curriculum, and I would say that's probably about half. Um, we have nine people in supported living using it, um, which is amazing, and uh, three people in our personal supports program and four staff in our project search program. But they already kind of have their own curriculum built into project search, and so it's kind of like a hybrid model for them. Um, but we're super proud of these numbers. Um, you know, it shows that, it shows the resiliency of people and how they're able to adapt um, in a crazy situation like this. So this is, these are direct quotes taken from our online exit card submissions. Uh, so some feedback that we've gotten from people we support. Um, I think they were, the first one, they were doing a professionalism lesson and so they learned about dress code, getting to work on time. Uh, and this is my favorite part. Playing a prank on a supervisor is not appropriate. <laughs> so I'm glad that they learned that. <laughs> um, and then um, the next one was um, for our health and safety. Um, or no, this may be the grooming and cleaning one. Um, lesson. So to take a shower every day, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, brush my teeth to stay clean. Um, and then from staff, some feedback we've gotten, pictures of each kind or types of exercise make Samuel understand the lesson better. So again, using more visuals instead of having wordy documents um, to better reach the people we support. And then the flow of the lesson went well. So, you know, we get feedback from all, um, all ranges. 
So it's this is amazing information for Kyra and myself to hear because then we can go back and tailor the lesson or moving forward, we can start including more resources um, to reach everyone that we support. And so just kind of wrapping up, um, I know we have another webinar in a, in a couple of weeks and I do hope that everyone joins. Um, and this is just kind of a preview of the stuff that we'll be talking about. So obviously, you know, Karen Lee, our executive director said on our staff call today, you know, this isn't a two month thing. Um, this is the, the repercussions of this are gonna be felt for months and months and months to come. And so we wanna be proactive about that. And the way that we're doing that is thinking really far ahead about what do virtual supports look like? Um, so we're gonna do some um, kind of virtual tracks of employment and personal growth. Um, you know, we don't wanna lose focus on, on employment. Maryland is an employment first state. And so that's, that's always our kind of North Star vision. Um, so figuring out how to deliver those services virtually of course, we're gonna continue with online classes. Kyra um, mentioned her money management class, which is gonna start up again in the next uh, two to three weeks, probably. Uh, we're gonna be doing some staff practicums where they're even doing some training themselves online in some online classes or modules, and then applying that you know, in the real or virtual world. Um, working on that three-part technology competency um, process, and then, we'll be moving towards a mixture of face-to-face -face and virtual supports. Um, and we're actually about to start rolling that out now. Um, we're looking at risk levels. So are people low risk? And this goes for staff and people we support. So looking at their low risk, medium risk, high risk, and kind of reshuffling staff and supports around that way. Um, and so that is it for us. So I will. Thank you so much, Abby. <laughs> there we go. And Kyra, we do have um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, so I wanted to just confirm, Kyra, you mentioned TeachersPayingTeachers.com. Is that right? Yes, that was a site that I discovered. Um, that's really great. It has some already. I want to say some lessons that would make great resources when creating your lesson. Um, for example, I had a PDF document that look, was created as task cards, and they are for a topic, how much change do I get back? So it's a digital interactive activity where people are able to click within that document once purchased, and that was great to use as a resource for a money-driven lesson that I used. Um, so Teachers Pay Teachers is really great. Um, some of the pieces that they have or resources or worksheets that they have are at most probably $3.50, uh, $3.50, just to be clear, <laughs> $3.50. Great. Uh, there was another question about, Abby, you mentioned a YouTube channel um, um, in your last, the last portion of your presentation. I missed it, so I'm not sure which one it was. I know I, I spoke about us using YouTube videos, if that was that question. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that I, don't know. I, I have used any specific YouTube channels, but YouTube has given us a plethora of information and resources. So um, I literally just take like some keywords of my lesson and type them into YouTube and lots of good stuff pops up. <laughs> Absolutely, and to uh, piggyback off of that, some great videos were found. Um, for example, one on 911, that was good. Understanding um, interviews, interview tips, I found one for that. But I know we, I didn't do the virtual interview, but I know you can find videos on YouTube in reference to that as well. Brain Pop has some great videos. Um, they're animated and determining on the person that you support that may be a great uh, YouTube channel for you to use. Would you, since we do have time, um, Abby, would you be willing to even just share what your site looks like? I know that you gave some screenshots of it, but maybe even just kind of navigating through a little bit. I know you're going to go into it more um, in the next session, but um, where we have some time, I think that would be great. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank you, um, Ty Lee Berman, for that charisma on command. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. People are sharing other resources they've used in the chat box, which is also one of my favorite things about webinars is people create their own little resources for each other. It's great. Yeah. Um, if I can figure out how I shared my screen. <laughs> I think it's at the top where the camera, mic, and everything is. If you click on that, it may ask you. Hmm. Here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the chat box. So, um, it, yeah, you, you go to our website, www.seeconline.org. Um, you feel free to browse around, and um, you'll see some other things on there that we might talk about next time, which are virtual hangouts, um, which are a little bit more informal than our lessons and a little bit more based on social, being social. Do you want me to try? Because I see a button that says share my screen right in front of me. Oh, never mind. I oh, got it. There it, is. I got it. it was right awesome. there in front of me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Bless my heart. Bless my heart. <laughs> so, okay. um, yes, seekonline.org, right up here. Um, this is our home page. And so um, the virtual support tab here has both our curriculum and like I said we'll probably talk about this a little bit more next time but our virtual activities calendar where we host our virtual hangouts but our curriculum um, has so we have a PowerPoint about just like fun stuff to do um, while you're social distancing so you can take a look at that for some ideas and then um, under each heading you'll see um, the topic and then it kind of just like it was modeled on our SharePoint um, website you'll see it all here as well and if you click the links if it's a worksheet it'll open it up um, if you click a video it'll go right to YouTube or wherever the video is from and so you'll see all of that here so yeah please feel free to go take a look and and try it out Trying to read the chat right now, trying to catch up if I'm missing anything. I don't think I'm, I don't think we're missing anything um, questions wise. Oh, for people who are not readers and need to be active learners. Sorry, did not just went away. <laughs> it's moving so fast. Um, for people who are active learners, asking people to gather photos of specific things can easily teach all kinds of things. Yes. Yeah, that is right. Um, Visual, for visual learners, taking photos, gathering photos of specific things, of activities is great. Um, I know that I have suggested a, an emotion chart for people that are nonverbal so that they can use that as a feature. And I want to kind of extend on when Abby shared about the platforms that we use. Zoom is amazing. Zoom is something that we're able to use right now because they have that sharing screen feature. And that's really great for opportunities where you want to show that someone can, can do a skill. For example, job searching. Sharing your screen on Zoom and then giving that control part. There's a part in Zoom where you're able to give control of your mouse to someone. So that means on the other end, they will be able to show you how they work that screen. So it can be, show me how you search for jobs. Show me how you use Indeed.com. Show me what your LinkedIn looks like. Or do you know how to find videos on YouTube? It's another form that we can use to, uh, as an instruction guide. Thank you. Any more questions? People are also just providing some additional resources. Thank you so much, Marcia. Um, I just want to kind of point out too, I, we, as we were crafting this webinar series, we wanted to make sure we gave enough time for content and questions. 
knowing that people are always fine if you end early, but people don't always love it if you go over. So um, thank you so much to both of you. We do have links to future webinars in this future webinars tab. The one, the, the piece that Abby talked about for the second part that's moving forward, um, several folks are already registered, but if you haven't registered and you want to learn more, um, I know you guys are planning on having some staff and folks that you support kind of share their experiences around it. Um, so it's just kind of that deeper dive into how it's impacting um, folks that they're supporting. Um, and I just appreciate you so much for, number one, diving in and doing something new and then being willing to share it when you're at the still introductory phase and being vulnerable with that. It's just, um, it's wonderful, so thank you. Um, we have in the evaluation tab, uh, please click on that and let us know um, what you think. It helps um, Abby and Kyra, it helps us. Um, we just really value that feedback. And then you also have the handout the, uh, tab. So there's the download for the webinar. And then here is a certificate that if you click on it, it shows um, that you participated in this webinar and you can use that for your training records if that's something that you need. Um, I also want to thank Aubrey Snyder. She is the person that makes all of these things work. Um, so thank you, Aubrey. And um, if there are not any more questions, um, we'll go ahead and wrap it up, but hopefully we'll see you, um, see you all in a couple of weeks. Yes, thank you all so, so much for taking the time to listen to us today. We're all learning together, and so um, I did yeah. put myself and Kyra's emails in the chat box, so if y'all have any questions or ideas or anything you want to share, we are all ears all the time. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I don't see any other...